Once upon a time, in a gleaming metropolis where glass towers kissed the clouds, there lived a young man named Alexander Alex Rothschild I, I, I. The story of how he found true love began not in the marble halls of his family's empire, but in the quiet corners of his own heart's discontent. Standing before the floor-to-ceiling mirrors in his penthouse's master suite, Alex studied his reflection with growing determination. At 28, he had everything most people dreamed of a multi-billion dollar tech empire, properties across the globe, and a family name that opened every door in high society. His dark hair was perfectly styled, his custom-made suit worth more than most people's monthly salary. Yet his green eyes held a weariness that no amount of wealth could cure. Sir, are you absolutely certain about this Harrison, his longtime butler and confidant, watched with barely concealed dismay as Alex deliberately roughened his manicured hands with sandpaper? The elderly butler had served the Rothschild family for over four decades and in all those years he'd never witnessed anything quite like this. More certain than I've ever been about anything, Harrison Alex replied, wincing slightly as the sandpaper scraped across his palm. I'm tired of women pursuing me for my wealth. The last three relationships ended the same way they all loved the idea of being Mrs. Rothschild more than they ever cared about knowing Alex. Harrison's weathered face softened with understanding. He'd watched Alex grow up, had seen the toll that privilege and expectations had taken on the young man. After Alex's parents died in a private jet crash five years ago, the butler had become more than a servant he was family. Your father once told me something similar, Harrison said, carefully folding Alex's discarded designer suit, though he handled it differently. He met your mother at a charity auction where she outbid him for a painting he wanted. She had no idea who he was, and when she discovered his identity, she tried to return the painting, thinking he'd let her win out of courtesy. Alex smiled, remembering the story. The painting still hung in his mother's study, a reminder of their first meeting. Mom never cared about the money. She used to say that wealth was like alcohol, it didn't change people, it just made them more of who they already were. Indeed, Madam was a remarkable woman, Harrison agreed. But sir, surely there must be a less. Dramatic way to find genuine love, Alex shook his head as he pulled on a worn pair of jeans and a faded work shirt. I've tried everything else. Dating apps where I used a different name, blind dates arranged by friends who promised not to reveal my wealth, even trying to meet someone at industry events hoping they'd be successful enough not to care about my money. Nothing worked. The plan had seemed simple enough when he first conceived it disguise himself as a working-class man, find genuine love, and then reveal his true identity once he was sure the feelings were real. He had already arranged for his cousin Marcus to publicly act as CEO of Rothschild Technologies for the next year, while Alex would supposedly be traveling abroad. What the public didn't know was that Marcus had been secretly running much of the company's operations for the past year anyway. After his parents' death, Alex had thrown himself into work, expanding the company's reach and innovations until exhaustion forced him to step back. Marcus, with his MBA and decade of experience in tech, had proven more than capable of handling the day-to-day -day operations. And you're certain about the construction job, Harrison asked, unable to hide his concern. Surely there are. Safer alternatives, Alex grinned, running a hand through his now deliberately messy hair. The foreman owes me a favor, remember, when we funded his daughter's cancer treatment. He's agreed to keep my secret and teach me the ropes. Besides, I need something physical. Something completely different from my regular life. No one would expect Alexander Rothschild I, 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 to be hauling bricks and operating machinery. Harrison sighed, recognizing the determined set of Alex's jaw. It was the same expression his father had worn when making important decisions. Very well, sir. I've arranged everything as requested the modest apartment in the Bay District, the used truck and the necessary documentation for Alex Walker, though I still think that I'm crazy. Alex finished, checking his reflection one final time. The transformation was remarkable. In his work clothes with roughened hands and messy hair, he looked nothing like the polished tech mogul who graced magazine covers. Maybe I am. But I'm tired of wondering if people like me for me or for my bank account. What Alex didn't realize was that across the city, in a modest apartment above a busy street, another soul was wrestling with the weight of family expectations and the meaning of true worth. Sophia Chen stood before her bedroom mirror, carefully pinning her long black hair into a practical bun. The morning sun filtered through her curtains, illuminating a room that perfectly reflected its owner simple but beautiful, with fresh flowers brightening every corner. At 25 she had built a life that made her happy, even if it didn't meet her mother's exacting standards. Sophia Victoria Chen's voice carried through the apartment with the sharp precision of a blade. Have you thought about what I said? James Wong's mother called again. They're hosting a charity gala next week, and James specifically asked about you. Sophia closed her eyes, counting to ten before responding. I'm working next week, mother. The shop has a huge wedding order and Emma needs me. The sound of clicking heels preceded Victoria's appearance in the doorway. Even at seven in the morning she was impeccably dressed in a designer suit, her makeup perfect, her bearing regal. Sometimes Sophia wondered if her mother slept in formal wear, afraid that even her dreams might catch her looking less than perfect. A flower shop, Victoria said, the words dripping with disdain. Your father was one of Hong Kong's most prominent businessmen before, before everything happened. And now his only daughter arranges bouquets for other people's celebrations the familiar guilt twisted in Sophia's stomach, but she pushed it aside. I love my work, mother. I'm good at it. 
Emma's even talking about making me a partner and the business partner in a flower shop Victoria scoffed. When you could be partnered with James Wong, whose family owns half of Victoria Harbor's shipping operations. Do you know what your father would say Sophia did know, or at least, she thought she did? Her memories of her father were warmer than her mother's sharp-edged reminiscences. She remembered him bringing her flowers every Friday, teaching her the names of each bloom. He'd loved beauty in all its forms. Even after his company's collapse forced them to leave their mansion in Hong Kong for this modest apartment in the city, Dad would want me to be happy, Sophia said quietly, gathering her bag for work. Victoria's expression softened slightly, a rare crack in her armor. Happiness doesn't pay bills, darling. Your father's dreams of happiness left us with nothing but debts and broken promises. I just want better for you the weight of unspoken words hung between them the story they both knew by heart. How Thomas Chen's investment firm had collapsed overnight, taking their fortune and status with it. How Victoria had managed to salvage enough to start over in a new city, far from the whispers and judgments of Hong Kong society. How she'd worked tirelessly to maintain appearances, to keep their small apartment in a good neighborhood. To ensure Sophia attended the right schools. What Sophia didn't know what Victoria had buried beneath years of careful lies was that the collapse of Chen Investments had been orchestrated by Victoria herself. The evidence of her betrayal was locked away in an offshore account, along with the millions she'd siphoned from the company before its fall. In Victoria's mind, she'd done what was necessary. Thomas had been too trusting, too generous with investors. She'd simply protected their interests. That the protection had left her husband broken and humiliated was unfortunate but unavoidable. I have to go, Sophia said, kissing her mother's cheek. I'll think about the gala, okay. Victoria watched her daughter leave, already planning her next move. James Wong wasn't just wealthy, he was malleable. His mother had hinted that the young man was besotted with Sophia after their brief meeting at last month's charity lunch. A wedding would solve everything, restore their status, secure Sophia's future, and ensure Victoria's own comfort in her golden years. Across town, Alex was beginning his first day of his new life. The construction site was already bustling when he arrived in his used truck, tool belt slung awkwardly around his waist. Frank, the foreman who owed him that favor, greeted him with a knowing smirk ready for honest work. You're high, I mean, Alex. Frank caught himself, shaking his head. This ain't gonna be easy, you know. The boys won't go easy on you just because. Well, just because I don't want them to, Alex replied firmly. I need to learn, Frank. Really learn. And learn he did. That first day taught Alex more about himself than years in boardrooms ever had. His muscles screamed as he hauled materials, his soft hands blistered despite the work gloves, and the summer sun showed no mercy to his fair skin. But with each challenge, each mistake, each gentle and not-so-gentle correction from his co-workers, Alex felt more alive. By lunchtime, he was sitting on a stack of lumber, sharing a sandwich with Miguel, a veteran worker who'd taken pity on the new guy, and shown him how to properly lift without destroying his back. Your different Miguel observed, passing Alex a bottle of water. Most rich boys playing poor don't last an hour. But you, you actually want to learn. Alex nearly choked on his water. What? I'm not Miguel laughed. Relax, man. Frank told me to keep an eye on you, make sure you don't kill yourself trying to prove whatever point you're trying to prove. Don't worry, your secret's safe. I owe Frank my life after what he did for my Maria in the hospital. We all do. The afternoon sun beat down mercilessly as Alex wiped sweat from his brow, hands raw despite the work gloves Miguel had lent him. His muscles ached in places he didn't know existed, but there was something satisfying about the pain like his body was shedding its privileged past with each strain and stretch. Time to wrap it up, Frank called out. Walker, help Miguel load up the truck before you go as Alex hefted bags of concrete mix alongside his new mentor. He caught sight of a small flower shop across the street. Through the wide windows, he could see someone arranging an elaborate display of roses and lilies, their movements graceful and precise. Without warning, one of the bags slipped from his grip, nearly crushing his foot. Cuidado Miguel yanked him back. First rule of construction, pay attention to what you're doing, not what's going on in Pretty Petals. Alex felt his face flush, and not just from the heat. Pretty Petals best flower shop in the district. The owner, Emma, she did my daughter's Quincy and her arrangements, and her assistant Sophia Miguel's weathered face broke into a knowing smile. She's got half the guys on this site finding excuses to buy flowers for their mothers before Alex could respond. A sharp voice cut through the afternoon air. Sophia, the roses for the Morrison wedding need to be finished today. Through the window, Alex watched as a young woman with delicate features and determined eyes nodded at someone out of view. There was something compelling about the way she worked each movement purposeful, each flower placed with care and consideration. Maybe I should get something for my Alex caught himself. Harrison wouldn't know what to do with flowers in the penthouse. From my apartment, he finished lamely. Miguel's laugh was knowing but kind. Tomorrow. Right now, you need a hot shower and about a gallon of water. First day's always the hardest that evening, in his modest one-bedroom apartment in the Bay District. Alex discovered muscles he never knew existed. The place was a far cry from his penthouse water pressure that barely qualified as a drizzle. Neighbors whose arguments and television shows provided an unwanted soundtrack, 
and a kitchen that made airline galleys look spacious. Yet somehow, it felt more real than anywhere he'd lived since his parents died. Harrison had insisted on installing state-of-the-art security systems and keeping the place stocked with basic necessities, but otherwise, it was exactly what a construction worker might afford on a decent salary. Alex collapsed onto the worn couch, pulling out his phone to check the news. His cousin Marcus had already made headlines Rothschild Technologies CEO announces revolutionary AI partnership Alex smiled, knowing the deal had been in works for months. Marcus could handle things. Right now, Alex had more pressing concerns like figuring out how to make his hands stop shaking long enough to open a bottle of water. Across town, Sophia was finishing up the last of the Morrison wedding arrangements, her back aching from hours of careful work. The roses were perfect soft pink blooms that would open fully by Saturday's ceremony, each one carefully selected and positioned. Their beautiful Emma said from behind her. The shop owner, a woman in her fifties with silver-streaked hair and kind eyes, had become more of a mother figure to Sophia than Victoria Chen had ever been. You have a gift, Sophia. I wasn't just being nice when I mentioned making you partner. Sophia's heart lifted, then immediately sank as she remembered her mother's disdain. Emma, I. I don't know what to say. Say yes, Emma replied simply. Look, I know your mother has. Other plans for you. But this shop could be something special with your vision. You see things in flowers that I never could how they speak to each other, how they tell stories. Before Sophia could respond, the bell above the shop door chimed. James Wong strode in, immaculate in a tailored suit that probably cost more than the shop's monthly rent. His carefully casual smile didn't quite reach his eyes. Sophia, he said warmly. I was just passing by and thought I'd see if you'd reconsidered about the gala Emma tactfully busied herself with the register, but Sophia could feel her concerned gaze. James was handsome enough and certainly successful, but there was something calculated about his pursuit that set Sophia's teeth on edge. I told my mother I'm working that night, Sophia said firmly. We have a wedding, surely you could get someone else to handle a few flower arrangements, James said, his smile never wavering. My mother is expecting you. She's already told half her friends about us. The presumption in his tone that there was an us to discuss made Sophia's spine stiffen. I'm sorry, James, but I have commitments here. Emma relies on me a flower shop, James said, echoing Victoria's earlier disdain. 